It's a great game. Uh, we talked about it some in the team meeting today and just you know how unfortunate uh, we all are to be part of it on whatever level. You know, most importantly, the players. I mean, the, the opportunity to, to play in, in front of a stadium that's there to cheer the competition, you know, regardless of what side of the sideline you're on. So uh, there's definitely a youthfulness that has to exist to be successful. And I think he's in a as good as an example if there ever was, ever was one that come, that, that has played the game or any sport of, of, of way you need to, to go about it. And, um, and I, I think it's, you know, he exudes that with, uh, you know, every time he lines up. So very consistent. I think it's a big part of his continued success. In Seattle, where Pete Carroll, Mike, said, yeah, we're going to get something done with Dwayne Brown. He is going to be out there week one against the Colts. We now know some of the details. We do. Uh, well, I'll give you all the details if you want. He had $11 sure. million dollars, uh, in base compensation coming his way this season. What they did was they moved most of that up into a signing bonus, including the part that was tied to per-game roster bonuses. So money he would have had to been active on game day for. So let's say if he was injured, he wouldn't have gotten it. Now will be uh, guaranteed and moved up. He can now make up to $12 million dollars this season and then there's something called injury protection where if you get hurt after uh, a season or or, uh, it carries in after the season and and you're affected the following year if you had a year left on your deal you can uh, file for what's known as injury protection Uh, it's over a million dollars well what the Seahawks did was they added avoidable year which now brings injury protection into play so if he gets hurt beyond this season uh, he can now collect over a million dollars on that so that was a big add so a nice compromise here. It wasn't an extension. Dwayne Brown's still going to be a free agent after this season. He's 36 years old. But if he plays as well as he did last year, then yeah, he could set him up himself up for another contract for 22 and beyond, even at the age of 37, whether it's with Seattle or somebody else. So Dwayne Brown, who sat out the entire training camp, I'm sure he didn't hate that part, now back on the field practicing in time for week one with a nice little compromise under his belt. A win for all sides, for the Seahawks, for Brown, and for Russell Wilson, who gets his blindside protector there against the Colts. But Dallas Goddard, the Eagles tight end, he spoke to the media and he said, I expected to have a contract extension by this point, but the team went another direction. And Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard, for a couple of years now, we've been saying, which one are they going to extend? Which one first? Can they do both? All this stuff. Right now, the answer is neither. The Eagles going to let both guys basically play out the final year of their deal and see where it goes from here. And you can't tell me that the possibility of a trade for a quarterback, you know who I'm talking about, Deshaun Watson, isn't a factor here. You got to figure Howie Roseman saying, well, maybe, you know, if Goddard's part of the deal or whatnot, then I got to keep Ertz. It's just he's keeping all his options open right now and basically deciding after the season, if he has to, how he's going to try to keep one. If not both, we'll see how it goes. They fill those shoes. I mean, they, those are tough shoes to fill. That's right, Andrew. And really, the Ravens aren't trying to fill shoes. They're simply trying to fill out their depth charge. They head into Monday night's opener against the Raiders. And it sounds like there's a good chance they're going to do it. The question is just, who exactly do they sign? You mentioned it, the workout on Monday with three running backs, including a couple names that everybody knows. Le'Veon Bell and Devontae Freeman, along with Elijah Holyfield, a name you might know for other reasons. Bell, the really interesting one here, longtime AFC North nemesis when he played in Pittsburgh has had a tumultuous year cut at his request by the Jets. He went to the Chiefs, basically became a bystander during their Super Bowl run, took some shots on the way out the door at Andy Reid, who happens to be one of the mentors of Ravens coach John Harbaugh. Bell is still 29 years old and apparently still interested in playing. Devontae Freeman released last week by the New Orleans Saints. So looking at some veterans, at minimum, expect them to add somebody to the roster because right now they've only got two healthy running backs available to them on the 53. That's Gus Edwards and Tyson Williams. Le'Veon Bell, 800-plus career rushing yards against the Ravens, 10 total touchdowns, his best numbers against any opponent by far. Be fascinating if, if an old AFC North foe would somehow slide into their lineup. Mark Andrews isn't going anywhere. Mike, tell us about that contract he got on his birthday last night. Yeah, happy birthday, Mark Andrews. A four-year, $56 million contract extension, $14 million per year. Slots him in third amongst tight ends, George Kittle and Travis Kelsey ahead of him. But Kittle signed for five years, Andrews for four years, and having just turned 26, do the math, 
He's now signed through the age of 30, so he could get an extension or hit free agency at a relatively decent age of 30. So it was a good deal for Mark Andrews, who through the first four years of the deal, including this year, actually has a better payout than Kittle on his deal. So Andrew's happy about that. As a quarterback, he's the first guy in here. He's the last guy to leave. Our, our players see that with him. Uh, that's what you expect out of that position. And But I have seen him a little bit more going into his 11th year now. I've seen him a little bit more vocal than he has been. Uh, you know, he's gone through some things the last two years. Uh, and I think those experiences have uh, helped him to this point to, to be able to put him in a position to help lead our football team as he did three years ago when I was with him in Buffalo. Yeah, I think it's butterflies. It's kind of being anxious um, because, you know, you kind of put a lot into it and emotionally you're at a super high point. You're really focused. We've had some really good days of practice. It definitely feels like a regular season week, you know. Preseason's one thing. It definitely has a, a preseason feel. Um, you know, when the games don't count, on the scoreboard, ultimately, you know you're only going to play a certain amount of plays. But when you know everything counts, everything's, um, you know, in the books on this one, you know, you want to be at your best. So I've had a really good three days of prep. And, um, you know, we just want to go out and play really well. But we got to go do it. And it's one thing to talk about it. And, um, you know, we put ourselves in a decent position to be ready to go. And uh, I feel like we're going to go out there and we'll be excited. And uh, we're playing against a really good football team with a bunch of really talented players and um, really well coached. So... We're going to have to play a great game. Yep, this one counts. The first of a scheduled 272 NFL regular season game. Sarah Walsh with us now live from Tampa. Hi, Sarah. Because this one counts, uh, the injuries actually are uh, a legitimate concern. Who is and who isn't going to be out there? Bucks reasonably healthy, except maybe there's a Jordan Whitehead story to follow. What do we know? Well, hello, Andrew. We can officially rule Jordan Whitehead out. That is not a big surprise. We have not seen much of him lately. He's been dealing with a hamstring injury. That would mean Mike Edwards gets the start at safety there, and the Bucks are completely comfortable with that. He has gotten a ton of reps for them over the course of last season. So the Bucks are okay with that. Obviously, they would like Whitehead out there, but he will not be. Perhaps the even more difficult challenge is how are you managing the expectations on this Super Bowl winning team? Because they are insane. Bruce Arian says they're not worried about that. I can tell you today a press release went out asking fans to be in their seats by 8 Eastern. Now, that game doesn't kick till 820, and that's because they are putting on a historic, that's what they're calling it, championship celebration. Arian said that pomp and circumstance, that isn't for us. We won't be there. He said we'll be in the locker room, and it's the same old locker room. The reality is it is not the same old locker room. The expectations are humongous. These are all Super Bowl winners in there now. So Bruce can say that, but we know it's a different mentality when you are the team that everyone is looking at with a target on their back, Andrew. Season is almost here, and we heard from Mike Tomlin today. What did he say? He said that it is – he said – let's start with this. Mike Tomlin said what he has said since the very first day of training camp is that he expects a deal to get done soon. The word he used six weeks ago was soon. The word he used today was soon. However, Mike Tomlin has remained – very, very vague about everything related to T.J. Watt. Now, he did say that he expects T.J. Watt to work tomorrow. Why is this notable? Well, T.J. Watt has been out on the practice field every single day. He's been in the building. He's been at walkthroughs. He is in team meetings, He but is not putting on his full pads and hitting. He is not doing team drills, and he, of course, did not participate in any of the preseason games. So I asked Mike Tomlin, well, to be fair, TJ Watt has worked this entire camp. By work, do you mean you expect him to put on pads and you expect him to do team drills? And Mike Tomlin said, I don't know how I could be any clearer than that, and said, yes, that is what he expects. But of course, he did say six weeks ago that he expects a deal to be done soon. So, Andrew, there is most definitely a stalemate here. The Steelers are maintaining that they expect to see T.J. Watt doing team drills and hitting for the first time since January. Remains to be seen if that's actually the case. Tomlin used the word optimistic that a deal could be done, but it's not done yet. Aditi, what's the holdup? Well, and I'll be very honest with you, Andrew. Last week I was on TV with you and I said that I had been told that this deal was very, very close. I have spoke to multiple 
people that have been very, very close to the contract talks in the last couple of days, and they have all said that that is no longer the case. The Steelers are very, very committed to certain traditions of theirs. One of them is that they never offer a full guarantee for injury, for skill, for anything beyond year one. That is a non-starter for T.J. Watt and his camp, and the Steelers, for whatever reason, seem to still be committed to not offering guaranteed money, fully guaranteed money, beyond that first year. The Steelers also, you think about all of the great defensive players that have come through the city of Pittsburgh. I've asked research to look this up for me, but I cannot find a single one of those players having been the highest paid defensive player in the NFL. We do know that that's something that T.J. Watt wants. We do know that his numbers certainly support that. I'm being told that there is somebody within the organization who is a little bit resistant to that. So the Steelers say they have until Saturday or I guess Sunday morning before kickoff to get this deal done because another one of their traditions is they don't negotiate during the regular season. But things are not nearly looking as optimistic as they were when we talked last week. The Brown Center, Tom, he just took to the NFLPA website within the last hour to say yet again that the union would like daily testing, which is what we had last year. This is daily COVID testing. Also, he says the PA did not recommend the taunting change, which had been suggested. Tom, daily testing, uh, we're a couple days away. It does not look like it's going to happen here. Well, Andrew, when the NFL sent to clubs the updated COVID protocols that laid out the move from being tested every two weeks for fully vaccinated individuals to doing it on a weekly basis. The NFLPA at that point told its members, we did not agree to this. We still are going to push for daily testing, but once a week is better than once every two weeks. So we also did not oppose those changes landing in the protocols. Well, J.C. Treader certainly ramped up that push today, writing in part, we are in a worse spot this year than last year because the NFL has backed off a key component of our previous success daily testing. The overarching point from the Players Association is they don't want to have a situation where someone is fully vaccinated, asymptomatic, but positive and spreading it to others before we know that that person is positive. From the NFL standpoint, it is not just weekly testing of vaccinated individuals. It's also targeted testing. There's a voluntary second test that you can take each week. If you have a vulnerable cohabitant, you can opt into daily testing. Also, if you're symptomatic, you get tested. If there's a cluster of cases in your building, you get tested. And if you are a close contact with someone who is positive, you get tested. It's not daily testing, but it is targeted. That back and forth is going to continue because the union has not backed off its stance. They want to do what they did last year, test everyone every day. We are two days away. Tom Brady echoing J.C. Treader's comments, although they were his own, certainly not speaking for the union. But he said that he thinks this year might actually be tougher than last year with balancing and trying to stay ahead of COVID protocols and the virus in and of itself. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, Mike. Two days away. I think it'd be naive for us not to prepare for you know them to be able to utilize him in some form or fashion. But uh, Andy's a winning quarterback in this league, does a great job. You know, I, I really have seen a lot of film of Andy, even going back to when Jay Gruden was his coordinator at Cincinnati. So very familiar with what a really good quarterback he is. He, he does a great job, accurate anticipation, recognizes the, the looks defensively, can straighten up protection. So Andy Dalton's a, a really good quarterback, and uh, it'll be a great challenge. And then you see the, the ways that Justin you know made a lot of plays going back to his career at Ohio State, what he showed in the preseason. And so uh, I think you got to be ready for, for either or, but uh, it's going to be a challenge for sure. He does a great job of just competing, you know, and understanding that, you know, that all is asked of him is to try to do his job at high level, you know, and take coaching, um, work hard. And, um, you know, I, I really appreciate that about him. I think he truly embraces being a Patriot, coming here every day, working, and, and letting the day, you know, be an opportunity for growth. When he's taking that role, I mean, he's just, you know, he's done a great job at it. You know, that's why he is where he is. Um, you know, he's he done everything, you know, he's supposed to, he's supposed to do. And uh, like I said, man, we just, we just ready to rock. Max done a great job. Um, and um, he's, I mean, he continued to get better every single day, uh, becoming a leader, um, grasping the offense. Um, I mean, you know, he, he's doing a great job and he's getting better and I'm um, excited to go out there and compete with them this weekend. Veil them on the TV, everything too, later. I mean, you know, the whole show that is the power ranking show. Zeus, the Buccaneers, what shocker, you have them number one. 
I, by the way, I was waiting for the Andrew Siciliano guest verse on that uh, rap interlude just now, but I guess I'll have to wait maybe for I, next year's I'm version. waiting for the auto-tune remix. Uh, yeah, the, the Bucks. All right, let's start here. I have a rule. If you win the Super Bowl, you don't get bumped out of number one on the power rankings until you lose a game. Uh, that's when the conversation begins. But even beyond that silly, arbitrary nonsense, this is a loaded Tampa Bay team. I, Andrew, as a long-suffering Jets fan, I waited for two decades for Tom Brady to get old. Now, I never want him to get old. I'm enjoying it from this perspective. Let's see how long far he could take this. I think from a uh, standpoint of a support system, this is the best he's had since 2007, the 18-1 and Patriots.